speaking as, to us tonight on a timely and pressing issue as we all collectively reflect back on Barack Obama's first year in office. The cover of this week's The Guardian Weekly declares Obama's first year, real change has yet to come. Tonight, Dr. Backen speaks to us on Obama and contemporary U.S. politics from her really unique perspective, grounded in many years of research on the politics of race, citizenship, and globalization. Dr. Backen is a professor of political studies and gender studies at Queen's University and is a Queen's National Scholar. She's the author or co-author of multiple books Tonight, the AIGNC, or the agency, is proud to present her talk entitled <coughs> Barack Obama and the Transformation of U.S. Politics, Reflections on Race, Empire, and Economic Crisis. What I wanted to sort of talk with you about is, I mean, obviously, it's been a long year for Barack Obama. Um, Obama was sworn in as the 44th President of the United States. Um, amidst a great deal of fanfare and expectation just about exactly a year ago. Uh, he was a first in many ways, and not least uh, marking the first uh, African-American president to hold the office. And over a million people attended the event on a chilly day in Washington, D.C., and many more millions watched um, internationally and nationally. In a certain sense, the election of Barack Obama really was a global event. Uh, it wasn't just an American event. And it followed the kind of rock star-like um, meteoric rise to public fame. And then things started to change a bit. Um, now the euphoria has really been replaced by eulogies. We can think about you know, the kind of extent of the millions who were there and how much we celebrated the exit of one George W. Bush. So this has been marked notably uh, by the election that took place recently uh, in Massachusetts, the senatorial special election. The race to fill the seat of the famous Democratic senator, Ted Kennedy, who held the post from 1962 until his death in the summer of 2008, was seen by many observers as really a referendum on Barack Obama's presidency. On January 19th, 2010, almost to the day, a year after the inauguration of Obama, the Republican candidate replacing Kennedy was very far from who Kennedy was. This was the hopeful, and this was the candidate, Scott Brown, who won the seat. Martha Coakley was the Attorney General of Massachusetts, the Democrat who was considered to have this in a, in a walk. And instead, the new uh, senator, Scott Brown, is a Republican, and he's seen as someone who's significant because Massachusetts is identified in the political parlance of the United States as um, Massachusetts is identified as a liberal state. Now, you know, these words always have a different meaning in different contexts and different countries. Liberal means not a gun-toting, anti-gay marriage, anti-women's rights, pro-terror. Republican. Um, so very much Scott Brown was not a liberal. He ran against liberalism as a senator-elect. Um, and significantly, he's seen as very far away from the iconic Ted Kennedy. Kennedy was uh, one of the first supporters of Barack Obama and was also committed specifically to the health care policy, which has been such a struggle for Obama. So we now are in a question of saying, what exactly is this presidency all about? Well, one of the first things that uh, Scott Brown did was to visit John McCain. And the Republican Party in the United States is feeling rather um, swelled, rather confident about uh, you know, getting over the bruises of the, the um, Obama-McCain election. But I don't think what we're looking at is really just a question of partisan politics between the Republicans and the Democrats in the United States. And uh, I want to start by suggesting that really what's going on is something much deeper that's not just about individuals, something that is a bit hard to discern. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of a headline of what I'm thinking about here. Um, I think the election 
of Barack Obama and the context of the election and the context of the debates that are happening marks the beginning of a shift in what the Italian uh, neo-Marxist Antonio Gramsci called a shift in the hegemonic bloc. Uh, hegemony refers to how the ruling elite rules, but not only by coercion, but with consent. So what I want to offer you are a few provisos, some cautionary notes, a little bit of a discussion about the election of Barack Obama, and I want to suggest that it was really more than one election, that there were sort of three phases to that election, which had to do with what we're experiencing today. Um, and I'll go through what that means. And then I want to talk about three particular big questions in terms of the context on racism, on empire and war, and on neoliberalism and economic crisis. And I want to suggest that this character, Antonio Gramsci, is someone that we might want to pay a little bit more attention to in the future. Antonio Gramsci uh, was not, you know, he's not, he's not someone who wrote about 21st century politics. He died in 1937. He was a victim of uh, fascist Italy, of Mussolini. Um, but he spent a lot of time trying to figure out why capitalism is such a successful system, uh, even at its earlier phases. And he talked a lot about this question of how elites need to have not only um, the unpopularity of control, but they need to have some amount of consensus or some agreement on the part of those who are what he called the subaltern classes or what can be called the working class or the poor or the oppressed. So I want to suggest that what we're witnessing, the shift we're witnessing, involves some changes in cross-class relations in the way in which the elite and the masses in the American population are paying attention to one another and that this has to do with some pretty big changes taking place with the United States in its global positioning. So this is a shift that uh, is contradictory. It's got a lot of zigs and zags to it. It's not going to be easy. But it has a lot to do with the fact that the United States, at the end of the time that George Bush was president, is different than the time that it was when he first came in as president. So to make this sense, I think it's important to just do a little bit of a wide lens and a little bit of a deep thought about what American politics is all about. And that's where these reflections come. So that said, there are a few provisos. OK, so what are the provisos? This is another president-elect, Salvador Allende, who was uh, elected in the 1970s. He was assassinated in 1973. And he was elected as the leader of Chile. He was a Marxist. He came through the electoral road. And at that time, there was tremendous optimism and people left with tremendous despair. There was an absolute massacre. Pichet, who became a fascist, was sort of identified as the repression. Um, another election that, that I want to make a proviso about was Nelson Mandela's election um, from 1994 to 1999. There was a big transition from South African apartheid to post-apartheid, again left in a period of despair. The reason I'm suggesting these as provisos is I think one of the things that we're witnessing with Barack Obama, and one of the reasons it's hard to figure it out, is we haven't seen anything like it. I teach in an area that's called comparative politics, and we like to compare things. And I think the human psyche likes to compare things. We don't like things to be completely sui generis, completely on its own. But it's an unusual situation for this type of transition to go on in the most powerful country in the world, in the 21st century. Um, and I think we, we need to have a little bit of caution, a little bit of modesty in witnessing this and, and allow ourselves as observers to say we're not really sure what the outcome is going to be or, or how it's going to play. At the same time, that's one of the provisos, at the same time as I think it is not an unknowable. And uh, I don't believe that what we're experiencing is something that we can't actually have some type of analysis of and so on. And that's where I think Antonio... Gramsci is quite useful.